So somebody recently asked me about my half toning process because I use half tones in a lot of my artwork and a lot of design projects. They asked me, how do you do your half toning? The truth is I don't really have one particular half toning approach. It just depends on the piece and sometimes it's deliberate and sometimes it's subtle. But I do have one technique that I use in Affinity Photo that will help you turn whatever it is that you want into something that looks a little bit more retro, a little bit more vintage or whatever cliche catchword that you want to use to describe something that looks like it wasn't born yesterday. Let's go! What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Conrad. I'm an artist and designer. We're gonna jump right into it. We are gonna turn completely random pictures into something that looks a little bit more uh, retro, like that. It's a really simple process in Affinity Photo and you can apply it immediately to any photo you find and you can also use that same document to immediately apply it to any new photo that you find. Drop in new photos and it'll just it'll just keep working no matter how many photos you put in there. I mean, you, you put a thousand photos and your computer's probably gonna crash, but yes, the more photos, the better. Let's get to it, into the screen. Kicking it off, we have this somewhat vintage-y type of image. I'm not sure if it's actually vintage or not, but uh, we have it. I'm going to add a levels layer, but I'm not gonna do anything with that just yet, so I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna add an additional HSL later or hue saturation and uh, whatever the L stands for, I always forget. And I'm gonna reduce the saturation all the way down. And now I'm gonna create a pixel layer and I'm gonna fill that pixel layer with you know, approximately 50% gray. Over here, I have it set as my primary color right there and I'm going to the edit menu and I'm gonna fill with primary color. I could also use the fill bucket tool and you can do that by, you click the fill bucket tool and you click and drag and that'll fill it. Sometimes if you just click, it'll do that. But what happens is if you have any elements on that particular layer, it will fill the space that you're clicking in and some of the other stuff won't fill. But if you click and drag, I've noticed that it fills the whole thing. And on that fill layer, I'm gonna go up to layer and then I'm gonna go new live filter layer, colors, half tone. Now that doesn't look very pretty, but we're gonna bring this down. We're gonna make sure it's on monochrome. We're gonna make sure it's on cosine or cosine. I don't know. Gonna bring that contrast way down till it like, yeah, you know, I had it last time set at like 20 because I want it to be fuzzy like this and I'll explain why or you'll see why in just a minute. And then I'm gonna bring my cell size down quite a bit. We'll bring that down to about 20 as well. All of these things, the reason I use the live layer is because I wanna be able to make adjustments to this because each image that I apply this to is gonna be different. And then I'm gonna change my screen angle to 33. The reason I do 33 is that when you look at the printing process, the offset CMYK printing process, they actually put each color of the printing process at a particular angle. And I, I'm not a print shop manager, I'm not a press man, but I do know that 33 is a common uh, number that they use sometimes because it creates uh, enough of a realistic angle so that you don't get a very linear type of grid pattern on whatever it is you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and keep that as is, but I'm gonna select that pixel layer and I'm gonna change that to hard mix. And you can already see exactly how cool that works. And the reason that I wanted to choose cosine versus say round is because I want to create this kind of natural kind of wear and tear of a vintage look. If I changed it to round, it would, well, obviously it's gonna look like that, uh, but <laughs> which isn't exactly cool. And the, the contrast thing doesn't really work, but uh, you know, it's like, it, it, that, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work as well for this technique. And it's a little bit extreme. So maybe I can change the contrast a little bit to give a little bit more definition. I'm more concerned about the definition around her face, so it's distinguished from her hair and her shadow there. So I'm kind of bringing it up just a bit. And then I can also decrease the cell size or increase the cell size depending on what I feel works best. Now I'm not done there. I could still do more. I can go into this hue. Well, actually, we already got the hue and saturation to take care of. Let's go to the levels. If I want to create a little bit more contrast one direction or another, I can do that. I can bring in some contrast. This one seems pretty good. This is actually one of the best ex uh, experiences I've had with this particular setup. So I'm not really gonna do much, but I can change the gamma if I want. If I want to add you know, a little bit more equilibrium between those uh, two, you know, between the extremes of the black and the white, bring that in like that. And 
After I've done that, I may go back in and change my cell size again or change my contrast again. And I can be flexible with this. But let's say for a second that we wanted to bring some of that color back in and kind of give this a little bit more life than just a vintage black and white image. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my halftone and I'm gonna change that to color. Now, as you can see, the color is already popping through. You see all the CMYK popping through right there, but it doesn't really, you know, applying a color halftone to a black and white image, it just, it seems weird. It doesn't look right. It shouldn't be that way. So we'll go back over to the hue and saturation and I'll bring up my saturation level until I get to a point where it feels like that looks cool. But then you'll start to notice that as I do this, like I've got some really bright whites because of the skin and the background and all that. And it really kind of looks like her head almost looks detached from the dress. I'm gonna bring that up to a point where I like it. That might be a little bit rich in color. Oh, and I could also, if I wanted to, if I didn't like the tone, like it looks a little bit reddish gold to me and I did want to bring that down just a bit, I could bring it down to the that direction or more into the blue and the reds if I want. But I will go back into the levels here again and I will bring the gamma back up, maybe bring my whites all the way down. And I can also do that here with my output white level. And this will bring some gray and you can kind of see starting to get a little bit of stippling in there, which might be good or not. So I'm just gonna, you know, play with that. Okay, and then maybe I'll go back again and change my contrast. And I can give this almost a little bit more of a posterization. So I don't know if that works or not, but it's, you know, like I actually preferred it better with the black and white, but maybe you wanted to keep the color a little bit. That's totally up to you. And I can fix that all I want. Now, like I said, it's really simple to just apply this immediately to another image. Let's go into our stock here and I'm just gonna search for another image. I'm gonna go, let's see, just scroll. Let's just find something that's got a reasonable amount of contrast. I actually found this image on here. This is on Unsplash, by the way. I know what I've said, get off me. But anyway, I found this image on Unsplash and I think it's interesting because I know this guy. Well, I don't know him, know him, but I know the guy who owns this microbus. When I used to work with the magazines, I've met him before. Yeah, I, I, I just remember very, very distinctly because VW Dave, I remember that. <laughs> it was like, and it's a it's a pretty badass microbus there. I really dig that, that, uh, that thing. God, I got my snapping on and it's driving me nuts. Stop your snapping. So now I've got it there. I brought it in at the top, but if I just bring it right down to the bottom, boom, just like that, that easy. I can just keep dropping images after him. Let's do another one. Let's drop another, let's, uh, that's fine. Here's another micro bus. I'll just drop another micro bus in here. And of course it's coming in on top, but bring it right back down and boom, just like that. Now I'm not gonna keep that one, but as you can see, this one worked out pretty good. I'm gonna go back in, uh, actually not there. I'm gonna go to the hue and saturation. I'm gonna bring the hue and saturation up a little bit. I am going to change my half tone, my contrast a little bit. Maybe you can get down there and bring my cell size down just a tad. Or maybe I'll go even bigger. Sometimes you go even bigger, it gets a little, it's a little cool and funky too. And again, the levels. Maybe you want more contrast, maybe you don't. And so there you go. It's really simple process. Three levels on top of your current layer. Levels, hue and saturation, add a grayscale layer, which you apply a live half tone filter on top. And then you just play around with it to your heart's content. And then you can save this. In fact, if you just want to delete these other images, save this document as your half toning document, make it a template. And then anytime you drop in a new image, it's ready for you to go. Or you can threshold the hell out of it, drop a sunset on top, and then drop a cliche type of phrase on there so that you can sell it for a million dollars on Redbubble. In fact, let's just go ahead and change this to say cliche. Much better. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> especially with VW stuff or anything that's got some sort of logo on top of it. I couldn't sell that shirt even if I wanted to because of that. If I wanted to, uh, you know, like maybe I'll remove that VW symbol, I could, but then it wouldn't be as recognizable. It wouldn't be worth it. And everybody else and their mother has done this on Redbubble, so do something original, okay? So there you go, my number one handy dandy retro style half toning for posters, t-shirts, whatever. Use that to your heart's content. And if you have any questions about it, make sure you go down to the comments and Hit me up, let me know what it was about this that confused you. I can't imagine why this would be difficult because this was pretty simple, but 
you know, the comments are there for you. And while you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so because I love new subscribers. But if you're gonna subscribe, make sure you hit the button, the bell button, because that way you don't ever miss a thing. And why would you wanna miss all of this? <laughs> I want to take a quick moment to give a shout out to somebody who sent me an email, a person that goes by the name of Ace the Tailor. They say, I was viewing your YouTube video on creating magazine style newsletter on Affinity. Do you create any other master pages yourself for sale or maybe just a general template uh, type with several master pages? I have not done that yet aside from that one thing that you could download, but I do have something in the works. What you see on the screen is something new. It's my first full-fledged magazine template that I'm gonna be offering up for sale on my website. It's not, obviously, I've just barely gotten started and it's gonna be a little bit more business-oriented, but I do have some other ones planned. Let me get finished with this one. I'll put it up and then I'll do some more and I'll put those up and these will all be available for people to purchase from me in the future. I also spent a lot of time recently going out for walks and trying to take pictures of some really interesting textures that I found around a town and I'm going to offer up a texture pack for people that will be, you know, something a little bit more, you know, kind of, you know, stylistically like mine, a little bit grungy, a little bit dirty, a little bit more interesting than some of the other textures that you see out there. It'll have both standalone images as well as some seamless images for people to use that will be available on my website very soon too. So another reason why you may want to subscribe or better yet, go to my website and sign up for the newsletter because I'll be making most of my announcements through there. That's it. I'm going to get out of here, but not before I say, hey, if you're interested in finding out what I believe is one of the most important things you could do as a creative person, you're going to want to check out that video on my other channel right there. And if you happen to miss it last time, I did a video where I designed an entire t-shirt in Affinity Publisher. What? That one's right there. And on that note, I am out of here. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.